Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Dan and Don's Fans Q&A, where you send us the questions, and if we want, we'll give you an answer. Otherwise, we just throw it away. Speaking of uh, Brock Lesnar, we do have one guy, YouTuber One. He'd like to know if um, if we if you guys be interested in getting Brock on the show. Yeah, I would. I would be interested in getting Brock on the show. Um, Brock's cousin, um, Brad Reagan's, is one who got me into pro wrestling. He broke me in, and um, Brad Brad is actually related. Yeah, I did that all that. Yeah. Oh. And, um, you know, you know I, I owe Brad a lot. I owe Brad a lot. Just oh. like I owe you a lot. Oh, well, boy, I mean, Brad, Brad, Brad uh, for the listeners that may not know who Brad Red- Redekins is. is uh, Brad is a real wrestler. He's a Greco-Roman. Greco-Roman. Yes. He took fourth in the uh, 76 Montreal Olympics, but that was back when they went by points instead of uh, actually who beat who. Because he beat... Um, the top three guys, and but he didn't cure uh, enough points to, to. I don't know how that happened, but he ended up being number four after he would beat them all. Yeah, no, I get. I I, I do a Brad just because I, you know I watched several of his matches, and it'd be just really a, just a, a really a tough individual. You know, so again, you got someone from a legitimate amateur wrestling background mm-hmm. who ended up getting involved in professional wrestling, and, and I'm sure uh, Brad really enjoyed working with people with actual shooter. Or real backgrounds, yeah, like yourself. We all had a good time. You know, Brad and I and Brian Johnston and Dave Benito, you know, we, we had a good time over there in Japan. I mean, Masa Saito was, uh, he, he's a big influence on us all, on, on me. I mean, him, him and Brad were great friends. And uh, we had a, had a good run for several years, you know, and then when Masa died, it's just, Broke everybody's heart. And usually, one person in an organization like that, they just they they lead with such credence that once he's gone, it's kind of hard for the company to continue. Right. Well, well Masa was a shooter, you know, and uh, Brad was a shooter, and uh, when Masa died, you know, it, it just left a bunch of political guys in the office. And instead of you know, instead of the, a real shooter there, take going to bat for everybody, you know, who knew what they were yeah, doing. Still be uh, the difference of being true to the sport versus you know the politician that that right. comes into it. Right. All right, on to the next one here. This is for both of you. It's from Rob Bozecker. It says Don, you're a badass. But Dan was the guy that got me hooked. His question is, were either of you ever afraid to fight anyone? No. Well, my wife. (laughs) Well, she outweighed you by about 100 kilos. Past one, not the current one. Sorry, Lori. No, 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 no Lori. The past. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in trouble now. Oh, you're no, in no, trouble no. now. Understand what I'm saying? <laughs> At the time. Uh, no, I just uh, when it came to actually, I mean, climbing to a cage. I mean, there was you. You really can't have fear. That that can't be in your your mindset there whatsoever. I mean, you you look at what strengths is this opponent bring it to the game what are your strengths and you know sometimes it's just going to be a collision out there and it's going to find out who has who's just got a little bit more gas in the tank or who's got a little bit more of that i, I don't pride whatever, whatever you I'm, I'm not sure what, what, what words to throw in there right now but there's there's there's, there's that aspect of that mental toughness but that heart to see things through, and that's one thing that, uh, you know, from a coaching perspective, a lot of coaches can teach techniques, can teach tactics, but it's tough to give someone that heart and that boneheaded determination to grit. see that through. Yeah, Some can't, people can't are teach just grit. simply gifted with it. <laughs> that bonehead technique? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I think there's a compliment in there somewhere. They're, 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 again, I, I tell people, viewers, if you have never seen the match, Don Fry versus Takiyama, you got to watch that because there is a reason why it is the number one most viewed combat match ever. It's because you, you're going to witness something that uh, has never been seen before and will never be seen again. And it was, you know, Don Fry and Takiyama in, in a pride I'll leave it at that. I got lucky that night. Takiyama, Takiyama's son made that fight. I got lucky. You know, uh, you, he you, made again, that fight. You, you both, like I said, you know, I, I always when people say who, who, who won, who won, who won, and I'm like going, the audience. The audience won because they, they witnessed something in history that uh, will never repeat itself. I mean, you got to watch it on a YouTube channel or something like that now just to, yeah. to see, see the clips of it because that's where it's at, and it will be there. For history. Forever. If, yep. Until the electricity runs out. <laughs> Until the planet destroys itself in 12 years, according to A.O. Dipshit C. Whatever that moron's name is. Well, I would just say that uh, I would read this, this current leadership. It could be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Any could, of the idiots could be, could be next weekend. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, well, kind of on the same topic there of Takayama, uh, we answered a question for Gabriel Hernandez a little earlier about you and the UWFI, Dan, and he asked specifically in this question, um, he wanted to hear about your experience facing Takayama in the ring at UWFI. He was a, a lot greener at that time still. I mean, he was still getting his uh, getting his feet underneath him. I, I think I did, did I do a singles match with him or, or I, I think I did like a, a mounted tag team type matches. Is that what it showed? I mean. I think it was a tag team match. Yeah, I, 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 I'm almost positive it was a tag team match because I don't think, I don't remember. I, I did a match singles like with Tamiro and uh, Yoji Anjo and a few of those other individuals like that. But uh, then there was this crazy concept of let's do tag team you know, MMA style matches, you know, and I know I, I did some with a Ru- couple sets of Russians and some other people like that. So and even uh, I was with uh, the late, great Gary Albright at, at uh, a different time there as well. That's another name that uh, people have never go- yeah. Google that look name. Up. Because, you got to look uh, up. What yeah, he did fantastic. at, yeah. at the Nebraska University. Fantastic. Murderer's Row. Yep. I didn't really answer the question there, but I mean, I, I, I gave at least some, some educational things that they could, you know, improve their o- overall uh, knowledge of uh, the fight game, the professional wrestling game, and, you know, some people of legitimate backgrounds. Yeah, no, I think you did a good job answering it. There's a question there. Well, you know, you don't be there, Don. Sometimes I just kind of like, I... <laughs> Was was it my Napoleon Bonner's birthday, and then uh, you just <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounded like you were let loose a balloon right there. Yeah, like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That was it. laughs> About the speed of your answer. <laughs> next, <laughs> next, next questions for both of you guys from Bushido Baker. Bushido Baker? Bushido Baker. Like BB. O- I just call him just BB Bushido. Like Ox Baker. <laughs> Question for both Dan and Don. Is there anyone either of you never had the chance to fight in your prime that you wished you could have? Speaking for myself, I think a match between Don Fry and Boss Rutten or Rampage Jackson would have been epic, along with a bout between Tito Ortiz or Hicks and Gracie against Dan Severn. Thoughts? Thanks again. I think Dan would destroy Hicks and Gracie. <laughs> we were <coughs> playing around on the video or the internet the other day, and they were showing Hickson warming up for the for the first pride fight he is out on the beach doing this shit, you know. <laughs> was, uh, that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life, you know. <laughs> I don't know how they... They did it without falling apart. <laughs> well, you talk about a scam, boy. They pulled a scam. No, I mean, it's, I, I totally agree with uh, what Don, I mean, what, what Don said right there is when you, if you look at uh, 
the UFC, the, you know, there's been what four old, or four different ownerships of, of the UFC. Uh, the brainchild of the UFC was uh, Art Art Davy himself, uh, and Art Davy is, was a businessman, so he came up with this idea, this concept. And he knew he could get some sponsors, and he knew how to move to try to get uh, get a state that he could he could run this in. So from a business perspective, he was great about doing this. He had heard about uh, the Gracie Challenge, and so he uh, basically met up with the uh, Horia Gracie, eldest son of, of the, the Gracie clan, and he made him the matchmaker. And now all of a sudden you got, uh, you know, Hoist Gracie, you know, one of the yo- younger siblings right now that's going to be in it. Now it's your half owner of a company, and your, your little brother – is uh, going to be in this uh, uh, competition on top of that. Uh, so the real question comes now, what is the integrity of the matchmaking here now? And I always tell people, the end result was when Hoist Gracie would win, it wasn't, they didn't announce that Hoist Gracie just beat this guy or Hoist Gracie just beat that guy. They always talked about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu beats Taekwondo, or, J- or Gracie Jiu-Jitsu beats Karate. And again, I'm just using a couple examples. So it was a promotionary type way of promoting Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, it was brilliant, brilliant. And again, I, I take my hat off to them. Uh, I mean, they literally, they made lots of money. Uh, well, it was ra- like an infomercial. Yeah. It was a two-hour infomercial that you paid for. Yeah, the the the, and the, and the the sad part was, the Gracie family made money, mm-hmm. but it wasn't shared with our Davy. Right. So, you know, that's uh, it's a conversation I had with our Davy at one <laughs> point in time, and he, again, he, he would that he would not ever say yay or nay to it. But it's kind of like going just, I, I do I hit the, the nail well, on the Art, head. Art's gonna love integrity. Yep. A lot of integrity. You know, for one thing, he's a Marine, and he carried that over into the business world. You know. And not everybody met that integrity level. Oh, no, I, I told you. Look, it's a lot of people were, were, uh, were privileged to the fact of uh, uh, we had a podcast that we did earlier with uh, a couple of military personnel yeah. that uh, served in Vietnam. All right. And, uh, you know, just to talk to them, you know, uh, both gentlemen are in their mid-70s, like 75, 76, I think is what they said their ages were. But still, both both men are in great shape. But to to know and to hear the stories of what what they were doing at 18 years of age, to go right into the military, they're just uh, just a different breed, a different breed of man. I hate to say it like that, but just a different breed of man because right. that's what was going in the military. And I hope it comes back into the country. That's kind of like us, you know, as, uh, as we're here, we're sure we're, we're here doing our podcast. We're here to entertain. We're here to uh, uh, offend, defend, uh, rub some people's uh, faces into the, the cow pie of reality, is what I put it. Because there's, there's some, there's, there, we have a lot of weak people or people that, if you only listen to certain networks or if you only listen and watch certain channels, you could be, I mean, you could be brainwashed right. to to believe almost anything that that you want. And uh, some people just need to uh, broaden their horizons a little bit more and maybe speak to a few older people that actually have lived lived through war and to understand. Some of the uh, the freedoms that the other people are trying to take away from you. Yeah. And I would say if you want to live in a communist country, go there now, visit it, and you'll wonder why the United States is the number one country in the world. Why everyone wants to come here? Don't turn it into the shithole that you just came from. Leave it alone. If you come here, become an American. Yeah. That can do a spirit. Leave all your other bullshit back where you really came from. I couldn't agree with you more, but uh, back to the question at hand. There's a question. There was a question. Either Is there anyone, either of you, never had the chance to fight that you wished you could have? There was that question. Yeah. Oh, how, how did we get off into all this other stuff? He's a hell of a neighbor. <laughs> I, really, I really got a 
stop drinking so early. Yeah, jeez. Like, you know, that was the last ball out of the case. Know, I thought, yeah, I thought it looked cool. Uh, my, my helmet there had that little, you know. Like, <laughs> No, I didn't right. give a well, shit, bro. The, the, the thing is, you faced the people at the time that right. you were in it. I mean, that's where, yeah, and see, the question like that was like, we didn't really control that company. So whoever they had there at the time, it was like, you should be went for it. But, but at the same token, let's put it a little bit different by perspective. Back then, there was an eight-man tournament. You didn't know who the men were until that night that you arrived there. They knew you arrived there, and you finally beat the other seven men at that time. Now pull out a bingo ball machine, and the different eight balls have the different eight names on to it, and they spin that the bingo ball machine around. The first name comes up, boom, and the second name comes up, boom, and, and you you finally find out less than twenty four hours before you match who your first opponent is. How many of the young competitors today could? Handle that mindset of not, not just doing the stress of three three the matches stress, yes. <laughs> three matches in a night, knowing that you have to take the least amount of damage, spend the least amount of time in that cage, so that you can be as fresh for your next match. There's that's it takes a very durable individual to, in order to to do something like that. Yeah, I, I joke about the stress because there's no stress involved. It wasn't like Oh my God! I'm I don't know who I'm gonna fight and who's next and who's next. It's like, fuck it! I got to fight them all anyways. So what does it matter? You know, you want the belt, then you fight for the damn belt. Right. You know, <laughs> and so there's to it. it. Doesn't matter who they put in front of you. You want that belt, then you keep go through it. You go through him. You go through him. You go through him. And yeah. You, you just you had to look at each. Opponent as they came up at the time, and, uh, even if you could have you could have had a tough previous match and right. you're sucking wind, you might have hurt your hand, you might have broke your hand. Yeah. It's kind of like going, are you going to tell that promoters, or are you going to go out there and man up and simply do the best you can yeah. with a, a, a broken hand? You're going to you're just going to walk out there and do the best you can. That's like, all the options you have. Yeah, every every fighter was a different round. You know, that's all it was. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't sit down and piss yourself because you didn't get enough time, you know, to um, prepare for them or enough in knowledge about them because we had no knowledge about them. Hey, you could uh, Google did not exist way back right. then. You know, you know. And, and you know, fuck them being over overweight by by half a pound or three pounds or five pounds. Fuck, we'd fight guys who outweighed uh, us. Hundred pounds yeah. over, over your weight. It was a fucking fight. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was fun. It was a fight. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Fans Q&A. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.